Our lives are laid out on a road of bumps, turns, struggles, and more. How do we respond? How do we endure adversity for learning and growth? I'm Aubrey Johnson, and we'll explore these questions and more on The Road's Rediscovery. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Road's Rediscovery. I'm your host, Aubrey Johnson. The Road to Rediscovery is about reflecting on life lessons to learn and grow from them, and of course, pay it forward and uplift others who are struggling through dark times. Now, as you know, you can get this show anywhere you listen to your podcasts. In fact, we are on platforms all around the world, some, and maybe most, you may not have even heard of. If you happen to listen on Apple or Spotify podcasts, we invite you to leave a rate and review. Otherwise, we still want your feedback. Feedback is a gift, I've been told, and I often tell people feedback is a gift. So please give us your feedback by sending us an email at road to rediscovery podcast at gmail.com. That's road to rediscovery podcast at gmail.com. And we'll give you a shout out in a future episode. And as always, we are truly, truly grateful for your listenership. All right. Now, my special guest is passionate about helping others recognize positivity and gratitude. He's developed a system designed to enhance mental wellness through combining positive psychology and technology through SMS messaging, also known as texting. With this, the nonprofit Take Two Minutes was born and wait until you hear his inspiration behind all this. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mark Bussell to the to this to this <laughs> to this wonderful platform. Mark, welcome to the show. <laughs> hey, it's so great to have you. Aubrey, thank you for having me. I appreciate being here. Your introduction, I, I liked it. Uh, the the road to rediscovery, where the, the road definitely has bumps and uh, ruts along the way. So that was a good good intro intro. Oh, thank you so much, and uh, and thank you for being able to relate you know, to, to the journey that we all have on this uh, thing called life. Right. So yes. yeah, for sure. So I don't want to have the listeners wait too long with bated breath on your inspiration behind take two minutes. If you can just go ahead and just dive right into sharing the reality in your journey, that is the inspiration behind take two minutes, Mark been an interesting journey and one that I'm now very passionate about, but it started back in 2015-ish with my older son, who was in high school at the time, and he was struggling a bit with happiness. He was, uh, you know, I, I don't want to necessarily label him as being depressed, but he, you could tell he was struggling with life a bit. And so I started just sending him a text message every day, letting him know he's loved, letting, letting him know there's people out there who care about him, trying to lift his spirits up a bit. Since I am a technologist by nature, and since I've been in a leadership role in technology for decades now, usually around noon, which is the best time to send a high school student a, a uplifting message, I was in a meeting or I was heads down working. And so quite often, I wasn't getting the messages to him promptly. So what I ended up doing is writing an application, which would take one of my messages I had crafted. And usually my messages were coming to me in the morning during like meditation or yoga or something. And this application would just take one of my messages I had crafted for him and send it to him automatically. Yeah. After just you know, a short amount of time, I think a few family members wanted to receive the messages and a few other acquaintances wanted to receive the messages and people were liking them. And I didn't think much of of it besides 20 people are getting these messages I was writing. Well, one day in a coffee shop, for lack of better terms, uh, I was talking to the person behind the counter because they were also receiving the messages and we were, and theirs was, they were telling me how poignant theirs was for the day. And a complete stranger in line behind me says, oh my gosh, I get your messages also, in which I was shocked. I was like, I don't even know you. And so I yeah. went home and looked. Yeah, I, was, I went home and looked and like 300 people had signed up to get the messages, which I was astonished by. And that is what led into what is now a take two minutes. Cause I realized at that point, people like this kind of stuff. People need this kind of stuff. So I need to learn more about it and make a system around it. So take two minutes started growing in about 2018 and it spent a couple of years in development and through, through the development, I was able to get in touch with a doctor of psychology at Duke university. And he shared just so much data with me 
years and years of data he had and research around positive psychology. And so I took everything I learned and, and made it into what is now Take Two Minutes. That's absolutely extraordinary, Mark. It really is. And and there's a number of elements that, you know, we can go in either direction and take deep dives in, right? From a technology standpoint and how this thing is built out uh, and, and the infrastructure, there's the psychological route, right? And and, and the, the amazing changes that a small effort in the right direction can have a huge impact right. on one's mental health and well-being, you know, and, 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 and that's, uh, I'd like to maybe dabble in the former and then maybe dive a little deeper in the latter, if you don't mind. Yes. Yeah. Cause I think the, what I like to talk about is how people can get themselves into a better mindset. So let's make sure we spend plenty of time on that, but I'll let you ask the questions. Absolutely. No, thank you. And, and so just, just one or two questions regarding the technical side. Um, uh, and, 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 I don't want I don't want to desensitize any of you know the the features from a technology standpoint you know um it, it doesn't lessen the intent and the meaning of sending um a, a well wish uh, you know to a loved one you know so um being able to schedule or to queue I guess could, could the te- could the technology maybe queue for a number of days uh, I was wondering so the way the system works now is Take Two Minutes has many activities that are around mental well-being that people can partake in with okay. all the activities, including just the daily positive messages. In my mind, okay. daily positive messages is one of like the 10 activities. With all of them, you can schedule them to be delivered to your phone at the time of day you want. So if you want to get your positive messages, and I've heard people talk about when they receive their positive messages many times, and people have different theories on this. Some people say, I get my positive message right about 4.30 because I'm transitioning from work life to personal life and I want something uplifting at that point in time. A lot of people get them in the morning hours, right, when they get up as well. So I think it depends on the person as to when they get those positive messages. But yeah, they're just, they're sent out to you at a schedule that you set up. And in addition to the positive messages, all the other activities, which we'll talk about also are schedulable. So you can have those delivered to you when you want to. Gotcha. Fantastic. And my last question from a technology standpoint, Mark, is, you know, with your decades experience in the IT field, um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to, um, you know, when you're going through the discovery phase of, of, and the design phase, you know, were, were there, were there any, were there any unconventional types of, um, uh, challenges that that you were faced with or met in 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 terms of trying to figure out okay how can i get over this hump this is something that um maybe has been very seldom explored or maybe never explored uh, but but to get it to work right this is what we need to do yeah it's a good question i haven't this is one that has been asked of me or with regards to take two minutes in the past so i appreciate that with my background in technology i've hit most areas of technology. So when I was designing this system, it was based upon uh, an infrastructure that could scale both horizontally and vertically. And what that means is I can add servers to it if it's needed uh, dynamically, and I can also add space to it if it's needed dynamically. Um, The infrastructure is actually on 14 servers. So it's not even like, it's not one server running this thing. It's 14 servers running what is now take two minutes. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't the challenge. The challenge of of the thing I had to overcome that was new to me was I really wanted to really well mesh up the communication path of SMS along with the website. And what that means is you can, as a user of Take Two Minutes, you can go to the website, and you can enter, enter your phone number, you're gonna get your verification code, you can enter your verification code and you're signed in. But you can also just on your phone, text to our phone number, sign me in. It'll send you back a link instantly, you click the link and you're signed in. And so I've really worked to make sure that interaction between SMS and the website is really well worked and it works for people and not against people. No, that's fantastic. And it does sound like a tremendous amount of testing that you've, you've had to do um, to make this work and work right. And uh, the number of levels and and MFA as well. So um, no, fantastic. Thank you for sharing those uh, with us, Mark. Now, uh, love to dive into the psychology part, okay? 
Um, if you can share with us just some of the features and the, um, for lack of a better term, um, products or vehicles of goodwill <laughs> that right. take two minutes consist of. And if we can talk about what are the core psychological principles that, 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 that is driven you know, um, that positive results drive, um, when it comes to what, what take two minutes offers. Sure. So there's all kinds of activities and it continues to grow as, as I have a need for a new activity, I try to still create those. But as we talked about in the onset, there's just daily positive messages. Some people love the daily positive messages. Some people don't. That's okay. You can always turn them off if you don't like them. They're not a requirement to receive those. You can pause the daily messages, but they're daily positive messages. Those come in a few formats. Um, we have a whole subset of messages that are meant for a younger generation, so like a younger audience, I would say children 13 years old to maybe up to 17 or 18, maybe even 18. Right. But there's a subset of messages that's really meant for that demographic of middle school or early high school individuals that were all written by middle school and high school counselors, or at least the majority of them were. Others were written by um, coaches and therapists as well. But they're really focused on that younger audience. They're usually shorter messages and more poignant to their life's problems and not so much the adult life problems. And again, good, good. with the adult messages, they can be longer and more in depth as well. So there's the positive messages. Um, mm -hmm. There is gratitude journaling. And I want to talk about gratitude journaling a little bit more later on. But as a precursor, I'll say that I, I've broken gratitude journaling into gratitude journaling as well as a gratitude challenge. What I learned while developing Take Two Minutes over the course of like three, four years of it being developed was if you offer someone a gratitude journal, a lot of people don't know how to gratitude journal. Further, if someone is in a depressive state or um, you know just in a bad place with their life and you ask them to think of something they're grateful for, most people will, after a few minutes, throw their hands there and go, I, I, there's nothing, I don't know. And they, you know, they, won't, they won't think of anything. So because of that, I created what's called a gratitude challenge. The gratitude challenge works like gratitude journaling, but it gives you a prompt. It gives you something for which you should be grateful for and asks you to write a statement of why you're grateful for it. But we can talk about that a little bit more later on. So it's a really powerful exercise. In addition and, to the, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that's tremendous. I mean, it's open-ended and it's not just answering with one word and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, I, I love the gratitude challenge. And we'll talk about how that helps in some of the case studies in a bit here. There's meditations. Meditations I have broken into many categories. And I say categories because in my mind, there's many types of meditations. So Take Two Minutes offers guided meditations, which are popular, the most popular ones probably. There's a handful of what I call meditational stories. So it's more listening and breathing and following along to the story. There's guided breathing exercises built into Take Two Minutes. There is... Um, meditations that are really focused on anxiety or calming you down from a panic attack. So there's a whole subset of, of the library just for that. And there's also just daily meditations, which is a different meditation every day. So there's many different categories of meditations that people can use them however they want to as a member of Take Two Minutes. Another activity I have, I, I'm sorry, I'll pause again. If I'm, I'm just keep rambling. No, no, please, please yeah. keep sharing the activities. I mean, you're, 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 you're sparking all sorts of, uh, 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 <laughs> Uh, great, great things in my head, and and energy draws energy. So I'm, yeah. I'm 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 on board. Please share another activity. Okay, the one of my more favorite ones, which we should talk about along with gratitude journaling, is one called Three Good Things. And Three Good Things is one of the more studied activities by the doctor who shared his data with me. Yeah. Um, it is an activity that's meant to be done in the evening. I think it's 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 one of the activities that's misconstrued quite often in social media too. So we should talk about why it's beneficial in the evening. It's three good things. Huge activity. Um, in addition to everything I've mentioned, there's also just a happiness jar, what I call um, my happy list. Works just like a, an actual happy jar. You put your happy thoughts into it. You need a happy thought. You ask for one, like pulling one out of the jar, and, it, and you can read it at that point in time. There is um, dream journaling. So there's an activity around dream journaling. And there's also sleep exercises, uh, exercises to help you fall asleep. So I think I've covered at least most of them. I hope I never forget anything. Well, I tell you what, that is a plethora. It's a it's it's a palette, you know, of of just different different types of um, tools and methods, right? 
And right. it sounds like uh, this, 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 this platform uh, is, is a voluntary opt in yes. type of thing. Right. So, right. so if it is a voluntary opt in type of platform um, for getting these, then um, there has to be some degree of self-awareness. I would imagine that the individual would need to have in terms of what is my current state. Right. Yep. So, um, and, right. and, 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 and Mark, in this conversation, I, I want to be very sensitive and try not to try not to um, uh, trickle into or dabble into uh, any clinical diagnoses, right? right? So if I say someone who's depressed, I'm not saying they're clinically diagnosed as depressed or anything, but but someone who may be, say, down, okay? Um, they they have some degree of self awareness to know that they're not quite themselves. They're you know they're, they they don't seem like they want to you know get up and go out in the world or they you know it's noon and the curtains are drawn and they just prefer to just stay where they are that type of thing. So it's 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 almost like trying to figure out where in your space that uh, there there's something relatable to 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 what can benefit them or can help them. Is, is that, is that, is that accurate? Yeah, I think you, you said a lot of things there, but one of the things I heard is an individual. So there's, you know, many levels of someone getting help for their mental well I, I truly believe therapy is needed. My, my product, what I've built is not meant to replace therapy. Right. I think in many times it, it works well with therapy, but you, yep. what you also said is accurate is there's a whole subset of people who just recognize they can be better or recognize that they have anxiety occasionally or recognize that they go in and out of a sad state as you ver you verbalized it. And I think those people can are ones who can look for self help type activities and yeah. this may be a good choice for those. Now, Take Two Minutes does actually work with coaches, counselors, and therapists. We have quite a few coaches, and counselors, and therapists who buy a pack of licenses, and they give a license to their clients to say, here, I think during between our next session, you should work on gratitude journaling. And you know, here's a source which you can use for gratitude journaling so that they give their clients a, a license and let their clients use Take Two Minutes in between sessions. That's incredible. I mean, and, and I don't know the exact term of it, Mark, but it's, it's to me, that just kind of tells me that take two minutes is, um, I don't know, clinically endorsed or, you know, supported maybe. <laughs> supported, yeah. And I have yeah. done focus groups to show the efficacy of the, of, the, of the application and exercises. And this is where I was talking about gratitude journaling and three good things and how well they work together. And if you don't mind real quickly, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you some numbers about the focus groups. I, I find this fascinating. So the focus groups, and this also touches on a question you talked about or kind of alluded to earlier, is someone recognizing if they needed some assistance. So I've done a few focus groups. The focus groups all worked about the same way. The idea behind it was I found 10 participants who I didn't know, who didn't use take two minutes, and they all followed the same path. And this, this path was the first thing they did on day one is, and there's been multiple focus groups. This has been done multiple times. But on day one, they take what's called a MDES questionnaire. An MDES questionnaire is a modified differential emotion scale questionnaire. A lot of words. But basically, what it does is it asks you 20 questions, and it kind of rakes your positivity against your negativity. All those questions are testing your emotional state over the past week and how you answer it. It gives you a, a ranking. So with all participants, that was their baseline. Their, their ranking, they took the MDS questionnaire. After the MDS questionnaire, they were all instructed to start a gratitude um, activity or gratitude exercise. Mm -hmm. It was suggested that they do the gratitude exercise in the morning. So sometime after waking up within the first few hours of being awake. Mm -hmm. And if the person wasn't knowledgeable or experienced in gratitude journaling, they could use the gratitude challenge. So before I go forward, this is one of the areas that I found fascinating. The people, the individuals who weren't good at gratitude journaling and chose the gratitude challenge, the majority of those, inter those individuals after about 10, 12, 14 days reached out to me outside of the, of the focus group and said, I 
when I go out and about in the day now, I'm just recognizing things I'm grateful for. It's amazing. And, you know, I've, I've been doing this for 14 days and I'm just starting to notice things which I'm grateful for in my day to day life. And I found that fascinating. What happened was obviously they were doing their gratitude challenge, which was asking them for things they were grateful for, specific things. But because that the gratitude does rewire your brain over time becomes a habit, you start recognizing things on your own. And so they were reaching out and saying, I've noticed a shift in just, just me spending you know, two minutes a day answering the question you send to me, how I'm recognizing gratitude. So all the individuals, <clears throat> after 15 days, they continued their gratitude exercise, but at the 15 day point, they started a three good things activity. So to kind of summarize, it was days one through 15 was gratitude journaling. Days 15 through 30 would be gratitude journaling in the morning and a three good things exercise in the evening. Now, three good things, the difference between a gratitude journal and three good things. Those three good things should be done in the evening. It's reflection of the day. You're looking back on that day and recognizing three good things. It could be something that happened to you. It could be something you're grateful for. It could be something that you witnessed someone do, but just three good things for the previous day. What that does is prior to you going to bed, you're putting your mind into a positive state. When you fall asleep, your subconscious works in that positive straight state to create new neural pathways to recognize more positivity. So you're kind of doubling up the positivity now, where in the morning you're doing a gratitude statement, in the evening you're reflecting on the day and thinking of gratitude. At the end of the 30 days, they had a five-day pause, and then everyone took a second MDS questionnaire. This allowed me to compare their first MDS against their second MDS to see if we saw an increase in positivity on the individuals. After all my focus groups, 95% of all participants see an average of a 200% increase in positivity after just 35 days, which I find fascinating and phenomenal. That is absolutely fascinating. I mean, my, my, my goodness. Um, the, and one other thing you mentioned, Mark, that I, I, I really, really appreciate you clarifying and, and really, really breaking down for the benefit of the listeners is, you know, we're not siloed when we talk about positive energy and gratitude and happiness. Um, positive energy, I'm sorry, gratitude and the gratitude activities that you mentioned, one of them was off, was, was quite reflective actually uh, toward, you know, towards the end of the day before you go to sleep. Um, uh, gratitude yields positive energy and yields happiness. And it's all connected, um, even though it may be under layers. I think some people may tend to take gratitude at face value and just say, yeah, I'm grateful I have a house. Or yeah, I'm grateful I have a car. Yeah, I'm grateful I have a job. You know, but 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 to to truly go through life and discover things that you may not have even thought of to be thankful for and, right. and, and realize that. And, and then there's that aha moment where that gratitude transcends to the positive energy and the happiness of, wow, you know, that thing is quite substantial in my life and I am grateful for it. Yes. I never thought of that before. Yeah, I like that. And the, the, that's the gratitude challenge. I think there's about 168 prompts in the gratitude challenge and the purpose of all the prompts. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was challenging. I wanted to make sure I, I found because unfortunately, you know, anyone, anything can be sensitive to someone. So I, I tried to make a bunch of prompts that were generic enough that most of the population should be grateful for, but also not specific to something someone might not be able to do. And that's a really tough thing to accomplish, but all of them aim to accomplish that. And I, you know, one of the best ones I use, always use as, as an example is the sun provides warmth and light to our planet. Think of a reason why you are grateful for the sun. And that's one that that's a statement that anyone can find gratitude for the sun. You just, if they say that I don't have any, well, they're not thinking about it because we should all have some reason to be grateful for the sun. If nothing else, it, it keeps the planet alive, right? So, I mean, there's all kinds of reasons to be grateful for something like that. But that's where that's beautiful because if you sit and think about it, you're creating those new neural pathways over time, over a short amount of, amount of time where you do recognize more gratitude. And I think, I think gratitude is an amazing, amazing thing to recognize. And we should talk also about the fact that, again, back to your intro, life throw things, throws things at you, right? So it's not like 
take two minutes just trying to say life is all rainbows and butterflies or make people realize every day is a beautiful day. That's not the case. Positive psychology is trying to make you recognize when you're having a down day or recognize when you're going through something and give you the means to crawl back out of that negative space when you're ready to do so. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, that makes a lot of sense. And, um, and, and, and I've been wondering, you know, and I think you alluded to this in your gratitude study that you mentioned. Um, do you have a lot of clients who have uh, mentioned to you once they've started any of the activities on take two minutes that um, there was some sort of, I don't know, subconscious change in behavior or subconscious change in emotion uh, or feeling, you know, that, 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 that just kind of started to, to ease itself into their existence, you know, and, 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 and it wasn't, they weren't, mindful of it until they started to feel it but it's almost like subconsciously uh subliminally just under uh, behind the scenes this change starts to kind of evolve have you has anything like that have happened with yeah oftentimes especially when it comes to gratitude the gratitude challenge specifically as well as three good things is where people reach out quite often and recognize a shift in their thought process around just life uh, quite often. And I've gotten a lot of phone calls around now, phone calls or messages. Um, a couple that stand out. One I thought was beautiful and it, it was actually an, a bug in the system. So three good things is supposed to be a 15 day exercise. And I programmed it to be 15 days. So at the end of 15 days, it stops it for you automatically. Mm -hmm. um, and I never realized that somebody had somehow, and this was probably why I was still developing it, bypassed that 15-day stop. And so they were on day like 400 of their three good things activity. They, they just kept doing it every night. Oh, and my when goodness. I yeah. So when I recognized that, I actually, I stopped it for them because I thought maybe, yeah. maybe it's driving them crazy. I have no idea. And mm -hmm. within a day or two, the person reached out to me and they said, I love that activity so much. <laughs> I just, I made it a part of my daily life where every day I go home and reflect on the day and think of three good things. And like, yeah. why did you stop it? And I was like, I didn't mean to, I didn't know I was throwing you off. And so <laughs> I'm currently, I'm currently working to make three good things, more of a variable activity. So you can do it for 15 days, but if you want to do it for a hundred days, you can do it for a hundred days also. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Wow. So it wasn't like, uh, something that, uh, was jammed in the person's application, you yeah. know, and, and, and they're wondering why this, this keep bringing coming up. They're willfully bringing it up because they love that activity so much. Yeah, they were doing it. They they wanted it yeah. to keep going. It was, it, was, it was both things you said. Something in the system did get jammed or didn't shut them off, but they actually wanted it. Come to find, they out. wanted it. Uh, ah, yeah. I got you. Oh man, that's that, that's interesting. And and, yeah. and and you know what? It's a testament to the efficacy of your activities, right? So um, yeah, that 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 that's a true that's a true testament, Mark. Um, you have mentioned something earlier that I find fascinating, and it is the relatedness of the affirmations and messages and meditations and the different activities based on based on the current condition of the individual and where they are in life, right? Um, say an adolescent in middle school or high school, you know, peer pressure is very serious. It is a very yes. real thing and it can really, really um, navigate in a good and bad way, the outcome and the direction of, uh, of a young person's life. They can take an about face and head in a different direction, good or bad from where they were coming from. And, and, and that's not to be taken lightly at all, mm -hmm. you know? And so uh, in having, um, in having uh, messages that aren't just blanket messages, right. That, that, that should cover everyone, but more related to where people are. Uh, I think that kind of draws people in even more, you know, to say, Hey, this quote that I got this morning, it's 
you know, it, it's almost as if they know me or know where I am in, you know, in life. And, 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 and to me, that's like a springboard to empower them to, 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 to hear more and to listen to more. Is that, would, would that be part of it? That's an interesting comment you make. Um, it is fascinating to me. So a lot of the, the positive messages are, I don't want to simplify them, but I mean, they are generic messages to try to lift your spirits up. They're things that yeah. might not apply to every single person, but probably apply to a lot of, a lot of people. But one mm-hmm. thing I have heard so many times over the years that take two minutes has been running is people will text back, they'll email me, and I, I get the message all the time. How are these messages so accurate for my life right now? And I do find that fascinating that people do relate to the messages. And so how often I get these types of messages that, wow, the last week has been spot on for my life right now. It's, it's like you guys are listening to me. Right. Now, I'll say, right. we're not listening to anyone. <laughs> it's just, in my mind, the messages all are very poignant for people who are trying to get into a better mindset. Uh, the messages have all been read by a psychologist or a counselor or a therapist. It's not like they've all been certified or like that. But the idea is we have gone through a rigorous process to remove messages that a therapist, a counselor, a psychologist thought was not appropriate for the demographic that we're trying to serve. So I think they are all good. They are all good messages. We have for the adult messages, I think there's upwards of 1,200 now in the adult in the adult database. So it's one of those things where you're never going to get one twice unless you're a member for you know five five years probably. So there's there's plenty of messages to be shared. Yeah, yeah, for sure there there is. Um, and um yeah um without a doubt now as you say that um now my mind is shifting to impact okay, okay. and um I, I can't help but think and i've said this to many of my guests <clears throat> you know like the road to rediscovery i'm just a drop in a huge bucket of people who are trying to kind of help other people have a a, a more positive outlook on life, a positive perspective, and to offer a platform for people who have amazing stories and doing amazing work such as yourself, you know, to help make this world a better place, help uh, leave it in a better condition for our younger generations than we found it in when we entered, right? Yes. And so I've, I've said this often to my past guest, Mark, that, you know, um, I'm just a small drop. And if everyone who is doing, you know, this type of work, whether it's having a platform or being a guest doing great work, everyone does a small part. Can you think about the exponential impact that right. it can have on changing the world? Obviously, there's a lot of other uh, not so positive things going on in the world, but 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 you know we kind of grow this thing right now. Here's where I'm here's where I'm going with with this. Okay, I'm thinking about as you just explained this. I'm thinking about the exponential impact that each individual who partakes in an activity on take two minutes, whether it's just whether it's meditation or just receiving a positive affirmation a day, the impact it has on their emotional state, their wellness, their behavior, their attitude, and how they interact with the world, how they interact with their partner, with their children, with their coworkers. And that change is for the better. And yes, that, exponential impact for each person that touches take two minutes in how they interact with the world that can have a dramatic and absolute dramatic effect in uh in 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 just in 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 just a short period of time i would think yeah i completely agree and i think um it's something that i can relate to as well i mean you know i've I've, as with everyone had ebbs and flows in life and times where i was probably when I was younger, maybe a little bit, I don't want to say angry, but definitely more stressed and, and less patient and less friendly than I am now. And I think it was through 
You know, I think even prior to take two minutes, I went through a phase where I recognized I needed to be healthier and better. And I started doing things like uh, meditation at that point in my life. This was maybe 2010 or 20, I think yeah. 2010 is a good time frame to say, started taking up meditation, started doing yoga, started doing you know, eating more healthy. Mm-hmm. And I started doing things like recognizing gratitude. What well, it took me a while, it took me a few, few years to recognize, look, I, I'm, I'm actually pretty often in a decent mood. I'm pretty calm. I can deal with, with stressful situations. Yeah. Uh, again, life has ebbs and flows. But then what really hit me was um, a few times in a matter of a short, a short amount of time, let's say in a, in a matter of like three months, I had gone into a local store and these are three different situations, three different locations, three different stores, I should say. Mm-hmm. And when I was in the store, someone said to me, uh, uh, one of the workers in the store, they said, you know, every time you come in here, when you leave, the entire store is in a good mood for about an hour. So we thank you wow. for being a customer. And that <laughs> really hit me. It was one of those things like, wow, I, 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 it wasn't until that point where I recognized I'm actually impacting people just by being friendly and being you know, positive around them, interacting with them. I'm having a positive effect on these people. That's amazing. Um, and that was one of those aha moments when I recognized, geez, just for me to to be in a good mood, or, you know, again, I don't want false positivity. We're all going to have ebbs right. and flows. We'll be, and I'm happy to talk right. about that because That's right. there's grief in life. There's stress in life. I am not someone who every day is in a good mood by any means. Right. What I am, though, is I'm someone who recognizes when I'm having a bad day. And when I'm having that bad day, I make it a point not to externally affect other people with my negativity because it's going right. to happen, right? We're going to have days where it's like in a bad mood. You wake up, with, you know, as the proverbial statement goes on the wrong side of the bed. But right. in those days, I'm able to recognize that. And I try to make sure maybe I have less interactions with people. Maybe when I do have an interaction with someone, I'm not as vocal, talkative as I like to be. So I try to curb what I do a bit to not have that negative impact so that, and then I recognize it. And I'm able to use activities I know to help me get back into a more positive state when I'm ready. And I think that when I'm ready is an important thing to say, because there is no such switch. I mean, you know, there there's days where I'll, I'll wake up and, and I'll, but not a good mood. And I say not a good mood, you know, it's work stress, it's life stress, it's things that happen. And sometimes that goes on for a couple of days. But what I'm able to do through positive psychology is at some point think, you know what, I shouldn't be in a bad mood anymore. I'm going to start taking the right steps to, to switch this around when I'm ready to do so. And I think those are important things for people to realize. And I went way beyond your question. I hope I actually answered your question. But I think those other things are important to talk about also. No, you did. And, and they are very important to talk about, right? I mean, the ebbs and flows... Uh, um, in our life, uh, the hills, the valleys, uh, you know, feast, famine, uh, yeah. it, it's all very important and it's all very real, right? So, um, you know, feel good messages, positivity, it, it's, it, it, it all sounds good and it is good and it, it's real stuff, real activity, but, is. but we can't, we can't accept that without acknowledging the fact that there are down days, right? Yeah. Uh, in fact, um, why would we have these if there weren't down days? <laughs> and so, right. um, you know, those those things are very important and very real. And I and I do appreciate you, you know, uh, mentioning them. I'd like to talk about the psychology behind things that are innate in us as humans. OK, and what I mean by this is um, we talked about and you shared uh, some psychological principles behind, you know, um, when someone hears something positive, they may be having a down day and they, you know, they, they, they just get, I don't know, back in, back in the day, the old school was, you know, I was in grade school and my mom packed my lunch every day and, you know, I was having a down day. Kids were picking on me in school. And then I'm sitting there in the cafeteria at lunch. I open my Brown bag. I take out my sandwich. There's a note. Have a great day, son. I love you, mom. And that picks me up, you know, so, so, so there's a psychology behind that, uh, getting that small message, you know, and, 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 it, and it does have an impact in me psychologically, mentally, emotionally, and all that sort of thing. Okay. But um, I want to see if there's a parallel or an alignment between that type of psychology when, 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 when an event like that happens and things that are naturally innate within us, at least in my view. Okay. As humans, we 
um, it's usually innate within us to recognize there's a power greater than ourselves. Um, there's also innate within us um, the um, um, the ability to nurture when we become a parent um, in most cases. Um, it's also innate within us to to give to give of ourselves um, to to be in community and to give of ourselves um, uh, to help someone right uh, who is in need um, and 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 there's 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 a feeling that we that we receive chemically within us when we have helped someone who has been suffering or save a right. life. And that sort of thing. Is there any parallels or any likeness or alignment in both in in in, in those scenarios that 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 we just shared? So I I think there's a lot of things said there. Um, one thing that stood out to me though is kind of what's built into us natively, how we have grown over centuries and one quote that i was looking it up while you were talking so i didn't want to get it wrong yeah but Bar barbara frederickson who actually had something to do with the mds questionnaire i mentioned earlier she's yeah. the m part of it she modified it from carol Izzard's original mod our uh, differential emotion scale questionnaire mm -hmm. barbara frederickson had a quote in the 90s and it said the negative is the negative screams at you but the positive only whispers so that's actually going back on Wow. where we were centuries ago right we back in the stone age back in the caveman days yeah. had to be really uber aware of danger it may be a saber-toothed tiger maybe sure. something trying to kill us all the time right so we had yeah. this this ability in us to be really on high alert and recognize the negatives or recognize the things that are dangerous to us yeah we live in a time now where that those that's not so much prevalent now, right? We have we have a lot of things in most people's lives that help them with security. There's not saber tooth tigers about to kill you. Um, there's obviously still threats in life. My point being is, we don't have to be on as high alert about the negativity anymore. Right. But what happens is social media and news still recognizes that that is an innate feature we have built into us and they work on that. They are, they're constantly mm. telling you the negatives, right? They're yeah. making it forefront so you take interest, you're alerted, and that actually just builds anxiety for people. You know, if you have negatives all the time around you, which again, social media, news, it's a lot of negativity, you're going to be more in that anxiety state, that fearful state, the what if state, because you're getting bombarded with all, all this negativity. And that's just something that's built into us. So we have to, again, recognize by, by Barbara Fredrickson says, the positive only whispers. So you have to listen for the positives and start making it a habit of exercising your ability to recognize the positives. And I use that phrase, exercise your ability, because just like anything, just like going to the gym or going out for walks outside, it's not going to happen right off the bat. You're not going to go for your first walk in the summertime and walk 10 miles, right? It's going to be, if you haven't walked for years, you got to start off with around the block or something. The same thing works for positive psychology and the exercises built into take two minutes. You're not going to do it for a day or two and just be magically in a positive state. It's something you have to be make a habit of your life with and recognize how to keep yourself in, at least in a state of awareness so you can be positive when you're ready to, like I talked about earlier. And I think that probably speaks to your question around you know the innate built into us. Again, we are predispositioned to look at the negatives. Yeah, we are. And, uh, and, and I, I really appreciate how you clarified that in going, drawing context from way back in the caveman days, right? Um, it was used um, in a positive sense for survival, you know, right. whereas now with technology and with media and everything, um, it, it's, it's, it's used to be, to feed off of um, yeah. knowing that, you know, um, there's there's this term called shock value, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, and with the shock value, you know, um, uh, media knows they can feed off that, and they can pique your interest yes. by attacking that sense of what's innate, you know, um, and 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 being calm and being still, as in the quote, which by the way I'm going to borrow, um, 
to 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 listen to the whisper of the positivity you know and kind of kind of shun out the the screams and yells of the negativity um it's it's tough to do but we all have that ability to do that as you said baby steps and consistency is the key though so uh, as you've mentioned and uh and and that is so true and that kind of segues over speaking of anxiety mark i'd love for you to share with us give us some info on the grounding exercise what what is the grounding exercise and thanks for asking about that. Ironically, that's one I overlooked when we we're talking about the exercises built into take two minutes. So the grinding exercise is one I like to talk about. And I like to talk about it because some people, again, it goes back to kind of three good things. Some people have heard of the grinding exercise, but people don't always do it the correct way. So the grinding exercise built into take two minutes is a more common one. I think it's called the four, three, two, one grinding exercise. But the idea mm-hmm. behind it is so you can get to it a couple of ways. You can sign into your account as an option across the top, which you're signed in that says mm-hmm. grounding exercise. Mm-hmm. At the same time, if you're out and about uh, doing something and you're having a panic attack or you're getting stressed about something, you can just text back to our phone number, ground me, or you can text back, I have anxiety. It's going to send you the grounding exercise as one of the links. So this four, three, two, one grounding exercise, the idea behind it is anxiety is the fear of something upcoming. When I say fear, it could be stressing about it. It's a a what if scenario is what I call it. You know, what if this happens? So you're worried about something upcoming. You might not even know what it is. It may be somewhere in the back of your head, but you're getting anxiety or stress because your, your mind is working on that. Right. The grounding exercise aims to bring you back into the present moment. So when you come into the present moment, you're no longer worried about the future. You're not in an anxiety state. You're more in a present moment state. You're focusing on the here and now, which is important. So the ground exercise, what it does, it it's just a, a little small form and it says list four things you can see right now. And I want to talk about the, the steps a little bit because people sometimes look past or skip over the important ones. So let's start with the four, three, two, one. The four is for things you can see. I start with that because I think that's the easy one. No matter where you are, I, I ideally if you are if you have eyesight, you can look around and see four things. That is kind of topical, right? It's really easy for you to pick four things around you. So you you write those down. You're slowly coming into the moment. The next one is uh, list three things. I think it's you can smell. It's either smell or feel. But either way, that one all of a sudden gets a little bit more interesting because I think it's feel. So if you're sitting down, you got to realize, oh, I feel my sits bones against the the seat. Or maybe if you're sitting down on the ground, I feel my knees against the concrete, whatever it may be. Me, I'm sitting here. I can feel my hand against my armrest over here, something else I can feel. And if I really focus on my body, I can also feel my foot resting against the footrest I have below. So all of a sudden now, I'm really starting to focus on my body and what's around me and the things my body is feeling right now. The next one then asks you for two things you can, uh, I think it's two things you can hear. I love this one because we have a lot of environments and if you're out uh, at work or the street, that's maybe better for you because you can hear a lot of things. But me, the times I've done the grounding, I'm in my office here, it's, it can be dead quiet, right? So people will sometimes want to jump and say, I hear nothing. And my answer is no, no, you really, this is one you need to stop and you need to really just sit there for a moment or two and think, what do I hear? And maybe suddenly you'll hear some birds chirping, or maybe you'll hear a car horn out in the distance, but you will hear something. The time you are taking though, is the important part of this, right? Because if you're trying to come into the present moment, you don't want to say, I hear nothing and move on. You want to really focus on your present moment and find something. And that focus, that time you're spending is what's helping you get back into the present moment. And I think the last one is list one thing you can smell. That's another one that's really, really tough. I mean, for me, I think sometimes I have congestion. So it's always like, I got to really spend maybe a minute just breathing and thinking, what am I smelling right now and find something. But again, that exercise, if done properly, after you go through all the four, three, two, one activities, you might spend five, six, seven minutes on it, but you've really brought yourself back into the present moment. And ideally you shouldn't be worried about whatever was bothering you in the future. That is an amazing exercise, and I and I love how involved each step is when it comes to the present. Uh, it sounds as if uh, it, it kind of progresses right from step to step. Like you said, yeah. the first step, what you can see, that's very topical. But the others, in some cases, you have to kind of spend a little time to concentrate on what you hear. 
or what you smell, you know, yeah. and, and, and that's, uh, that's extraordinary because that is doing it correctly, investing the time and, and the whole time that you're doing that, you're actually coming into the present, right? <laughs> that's right. the beauty behind it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love the exercise. And again, if it's done right, it really can't help people. Man, that's fantastic. Mark, that is awesome. So if you can share with the listeners, how can they learn more about you, connect with you, and learn more about the great work that you're doing with Take Two Minutes? I appreciate that, Aubrey. So obviously, take2minutes.org. I will say, I think we touched on it. Take Two Minutes is a nonprofit. Um, and something you touched on early in the show is one of my missions, I feel like, in life now is, you know, I, I want people to use Take Two Minutes. I want to grow Take Two Minutes. But really, my mission, I feel like, is to make awareness around these activities. So part of me, I always want to tell people, Take Two Minutes is a nonprofit. I make nothing off of Take Two Minutes. I don't know if I will ever make anything off of Take Two Minutes. My goal for Take Two Minutes is to help people. Mm -hmm. um, if you use Take Two Minutes, I thank you. I think this is beautiful. If you find a better way to do the activities and take, that take two minutes, like if you want to write your gratitude into a pen and paper, do it. Um, I, I want people to partake in the activities that help them. There are... I don't know, 7,000 applications on the app store that have functions like take two minutes. And my goal is for people to find the one that works for them. I like how take two minutes works with the text messaging integration with the website. It's not for everyone. Some people I found like they don't like the text messages, but the point I'm trying to make here is find a system that works for you. Find a system that helps you get into a better mindset. There's all kinds of options out there, whether it's you know therapy, a different app, or take two minutes. Invest a little bit of time, learn some exercises, and help yourself be a more positive person. So with that being said, take two minutes.org is the website. On take two minutes.org, I think on the home page is it even links to schedule a meeting with me if you want to meet with me. My email address is mark at take two minutes.org. I'm happy to answer questions. Um, the best I can, or at least help people with the activities that take two minutes to give suggestions. I'm on uh, LinkedIn and all social media. I think you can find me almost anywhere at, at take two men. M I N. Fantastic. Mark. That's wonderful. We're going to leave the uh, email address, the web address, and all the links that you mentioned in the episode show notes. So the listeners can click connect with you, click learn about your great work with Take Two Minutes while listening to this wonderful conversation. Mark Fussell, I can't thank you enough for coming on to the show and just sharing some amazing insights and the inspiration behind Take Two Minutes. I must commend you for the great work that you're doing to uh, just, just, to, just to be a champion and an ambassador of positivity and positive energy um, throughout the world. Um, one positive affirmation at a time. Mark, thank you so much for coming on the show. I hope we can stay in touch and hopefully bring you on the show at a future time. I would love that. Thank you for having me, Aubrey. I very much appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. It's our pleasure. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in and listening. And hey, look, you may feel like this at times, but in our daily struggles and adversities, we're never alone. And hope is always just around the corner. I humbly ask that you please share this show with someone you know, someone you love who needs motivation, inspiration, and support. And you know, when it comes down to it, we're all just roadies on this journey of life. And it feels good having you on the road with me. Thanks again for listening. and We'll chat again soon. We really hope you enjoyed this episode of The Roads Rediscovery. We'd love to hear from you. Shoot us an email at roadsrediscoverypodcast at gmail.com and leave us any questions or comments you may have.